If you've never used GeoNodes before, or you're interested in learning about looping animations, then this might be a really good introduction for you. So if we switch across to edit mode and press Control B, we can bevel this cube, and we can and we can add some extra cuts using the mouse scroll. We don't want it too excessive, just something to make it look a little bit rounded. And right click, and we can shade smooth or auto smooth, depending on the object. I think auto smooth is probably best in this case because we have the flat edges. And this is too big, so I really want to reduce the size of this to say scale by 0 0.05. And then we can just apply the scale just here. In fact, maybe even a little bit smaller. Take that down by 0.5 again. So there we go. And now what we can do is we can just move this out of the way. So you can grab X10, just shift it right out of the way. We don't need to worry about that for the time being. And what we can do is we can just add an object. It doesn't matter, we can add literally any object. So I'm gonna add a plane, and then we come across the geometry nodes tab, and we hit new here. So make sure it's set to modifier, and then hit new. And we'll just call this blocks. It doesn't matter, it's nice to name things correctly. And we don't need a group input. And as you can see, this disappears. That's because, as I say, we don't need to use the actual geometry in there. We just need an object to assign this this node to. So what we can start off by doing is we can add in a new grid. So if we press shift A and then come to mesh and then primitives, we can add a grid. And we probably want to say 50 on the X and 50 on the Y. This is giving us points. So we can see here the grid. I mean, it just looks like the plane that we started with, but it's not, it's different. You can see up here all the different points. So what we can do is we can actually add objects on each of these points. So if we come to instances, so shift A, instances, instance on points, we pop that in there. Disappears because we haven't put anything to instance on these points. So now we can come back to the cube that we used earlier and just literally drag it in to the window. So from the hierarchy to the window, and then we can use the geometry into the instance. And now we can see we have a grid of cubes. Now these are all overlapping at the moment, but don't worry about that, that's absolutely fine. So what we can do is we can actually change the position of these objects using a geometry right set position node. So we can put this in here and then we can change the offset just like this. So what we can do is we can get this position node. So that's geometry read position. And if we plug that into position, nothing changes. So if we come across to utilities, vector, vector math. So if we leave this as add, we can control the offset of that original position. And what we can do is we can add a texture and pick a wave texture. And if we just plug the fact into this, as you can see, it does some crazy stuff, but you can see how it's starting to adjust the position of everything. Now what I want to do is I want to change this from bands to rings to begin with and I'm going to change this to Z. So this wave texture is affecting the X, Y and Z position of every single block and ideally we just want to affect one axis. So the way that we do that is we come across to utilities, vector and we want to combine X, Y, Z. So if we plug it into there and if we change that to the Z axis we can start to see a kind of a, a wave pattern emerging. Now this is pretty extreme so what we can do we can come to utilities again map and map range and we can plug that into there and then we can change the max to something like 0.1 so now we can see this is a little bit more wave-like and we can use the phase offset to sort of animate it so what I'd like to do is actually adjust the size of each of these blocks so I'm going to take the fact from the wave texture and I'm going to plug that straight into the scale. And we can see there that there's some blocks that are tiny and some blocks that are large. But we still have a lot of overlapping geometry, which I'm not too keen on. So again, I'm going to add. So again, I'm going to utility, math, and math. And I'm going to pop that into just there. And I'm going to change that to multiply. And now we can adjust the size to suit. So maybe 0.5. Okay. So in terms of the actual rings these are too dense for my liking so i'm going to change those to two and that gives much nicer nicer curves we can adjust using the map range if we need to 0 0.05 looks kind of good and we can check to see how it looks using the phase offset which i think is nice and we can adjust the amount if we want to so we could do say 20 to make it a little bit more sparse i think for the time being i'm going to leave that at 50. now what i also want to do is i want to add a little bit of distortion to this just to make it a little bit more chaotic and i think that looks kind of cool maybe a little bit too much though i think that looks about right i'm going to increase that to 0 0.1 just so that we have a little bit more variance in the in the distance so what i'm going to do is I'm going to get this animated to see how it looks visually so i'm going to go to the end of the animation to begin with and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a keyframe on the phase offset so i'm going to set that to zero and hit i to keyframe that and now i'm going to come all the way back to zero and i've found for this particular texture if we set this to 6.29 and then if we keyframe that what we should see 
and I'm just going to quickly change this to 60 frames per second just to speed it up a little bit and it looks a little bit smoother this should loop nicely right okay so you notice it slowed down and stopped that is because we need to hover over this timeline with the keyframe selected being yellow press T and then just set this to linear and there we can see this is seamlessly looping now which I think is really nice now one of the problems that we're facing currently is that this is what it looks like when it's rendered it's very plain it's very boring so let's jump across into the shading tab to get some colors on this so let's take the material that comes as default now the problem that you're going to face is you can only really apply one color to this this object using using a, the standard shader setup so for example do control t and let's add in a texture we'll do say gradient texture plug into there and we'll change it to spherical so we can see that this is actually applying to the uvs of each individual cube rather than the animation as a whole and if that's what you want then great you know your work here is done but if you want something a little bit more conformed over the whole object then we're going to need to do some extra stuff so i'm going to get rid of those and if we come back across to geometry nodes we need to add a couple more nodes so we search for realize we get to realize instances and stick that in there and then if you search for store named attribute and plug that into there we can just call this call for color and then we can assign a value to this attribute and so we can say if we take the the wave texture and we just plug in from this multiply node here all the way across the value and then we come back to the shading tab and what we can do is we can shift a go to input and then attribute and now we can plug this into a color ramp plug that into the base color type in col just there because that's the attribute name that we gave it in the in the geometry nodes and now we can see that the color of the blocks is changing depending on the scale of it or its position well, ultimately it's tied to the value of the wave texture but the wave texture is influencing all of those particular values as well it's really light up here and it's really dark down here at the bottom so now we've got a really nice looping effect so for the finishing touches we're going to turn the strength of the world down to zero because we don't want any light from outside and I, I like the contrast in black background with the blue i've got a couple of area lights just to illuminate the scene a little bit and give us some nice reflections but what i also want to do is i want to add in an area light straight beneath it it's going to rotate it x 180 and that gives us all this illumination now it's just a case of now positioning your camera to capture what you need so we could perhaps do this and then we can perhaps say add an empty and we'll just add a cube and let's just make it a little bit smaller so we can actually see it and now we can click on the camera and if we come down to this camera tab here click on depth of field we can actually target this empty and so we can see that this is all in focus and the further out we get the more fuzzy it gets which is a really nice effect you just position the camera so it's catching all of the edges and so when we play the animation it's getting everything in the frame just there what we can do is if we come across to the camera settings again and we come to viewport display we see this setting which is called pass per two so all we need to do is increase this to one just to get rid of this these edges here because they can kind of throw off the overall feel of the composition now another thing that we can do is we can take the camera and then we can shift click on the empty and control p and then we can parent to objects and now we can go back to the start zero keyframe and we can press i rotation we can get to the end of the animation we can rotate z 360 then i rotation again and just like we did before we can press t change to linear and now the camera will rotate around the animation as well so it adds a whole load of more chaos so that's pretty much the long and short of this just need to render it out and then I can pass it over to Devalin so that he can use it on his stream. So if you want to check out how he's using this, go check out the link in the description. If you want access to the project files for this, then go to the member section of the channel and I'll, uh, I'll pop this somewhere for people to grab hold of, probably in the Discord or something. So if you like this style of teaching, then give me a thumbs up and maybe hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more just like this. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking by.